All right, I am back grading more of your dynasty football trades. Now, do you want a trade that you've completed to be considered? It's quite easy. All you got to do is join our Discord with the link that is in the description. Now, when you join our Discord community, there is a text channel that says Dynasty Trades. Anytime you submit a Dynasty trade in there, whether you want thoughts from the community or you want us to do a video on it, it will be considered once you send it in there. We look through those trades every week um, to find interesting conversations to, to make a video about. So also, Badaki isn't here. He's either getting married right now or he's about to get married. So shout out to him. And congrats on tying the knot, brother. But uh, shout out to Dan, who has our first trade here today. Team A has Zeke and Tony Pollard. Team B gets a 2023 first round pick and a 2023 third round pick. Now you noticed I didn't say mid to late. I know that's what it says, but I am of the belief that you really cannot determine or project future firsts, okay? Injuries happen all the time. Teams trade their uh, change their strategy midseason all the time. It happens every year in leagues, and people go all in. So we can't really sit here and say that's definitely going to be a late 2023 first. And we do need to consider that when considering this trade. I think it's a relatively even deal. All right, Team A, this better be a win now team. Now we don't have access to the context of every single team but this better be a win now team. Otherwise, this is a bad move. This doesn't make sense for a team to go out and get Zeke and Tony Pollard if they're building for the future. You don't lose future draft capital to go do something like that. Now, this is the only way I want Zeke on my team is if I am a win now team because what I've seen from him is that he is continually losing a step. Uh, team B wise, I mean, you're looking towards the future here, getting the, the first round pick in next year class, a very talented class, and you're building draft capital. So if I have to, again, I think this is relatively even, but if I do have to choose a side, I am going to lean team B here, to be honest. Uh, this is the side that I would rather have in this trade. And I found it interesting because a lot of people, you know, help out in our community. And a lot of people actually chose the Ezekiel Elliott side. To me, it only makes sense if I'm a win now team. And, you know, there could be two winners here. This could be a win-win deal. But if I have to choose one, as far as what, what, what I would prefer, I would prefer the team B side. All right. From what I saw to Zeke last year, I truly think it's difficult to see him being a workhorse running back for much longer in the NFL. I, I truly do view this backfield as a 50-50 workload between Zeke and Tony Pollard this year. We already saw that happening more and more last year. I think that gets even more drastic this year with Pollard getting a little bit more work and taking away from Zeke, which in one sense, it's good because you have both of these players. But in another sense, it's actually bad because they're both going, in my opinion, they're both going to be limiting each other's upside by their work in, in the offense. So I think a smarter move here, to be honest, if I'm team A, is choosing one of these running backs to go trade for because i think they're both going to have workload in this offense i know we can't predict injuries but let's say you were either going to go trade for zeke or pollard i would actually ideally prefer to trade for pollard but you would have to give up much less you know let's say let's say i can get a a, a tony pollard for a 2023 second round pick or a 2022 second round pick i feel so much better about that than getting rid of future draft capital for an asset that is aging and continually decreasing in value. I mean, if we're talking about an asset that's depreciating, Zeke is the definition of that. He is definitely going to be worth a lot less next year. And that 2023 pick, who knows what that's going to be? And that is a very talented draft class. You could argue that like the 102 and the 103 in this year's class is like the 23 picks are... are pretty much anywhere are going to maybe be just as valuable as that, no matter where they are in the first. It is a stacked class offensively. And yes, anything can happen. You know, maybe it's not as good of a class as we thought it was. But for me, Zeke is continually getting worse and his value is getting worse. So I just don't think it makes a lot of sense for the future of a team unless you're win now. So I would choose the team B side. Comment down below. Let me know what you would choose. 
I gave out grades. Team A, I gave a B flat, assuming you're a win now team. And team B, I gave a B plus, because I do think you gave the bet, you got the better end of this deal. So thank you, Dan, for submitting that trade. I'm now gonna look at our second trade of the video. Shout out to AJ. And you can see the trade, it's a pretty simple trade. This isn't a three team deal or 10 players involved. It's a simple trade, but I wanted to, to bring my thoughts on it because I think I have a differing opinion to the general consensus. I think my thoughts on this would be different to most of you out there and that's okay. But I just want to explain most people in our discord community were voting for team a saying that Deontay Johnson was the better end of this deal. But I actually do prefer the 102 over Deontay Johnson in this year's class. Um, firstly, which side of this trade is going to gain more value after the NFL draft or leading into the NFL draft? Let's say Malik lands in a good spot like Seattle or New Orleans. Let's say Brees and Kenneth land in ideal spots, maybe Buffalo, Arizona, Tampa Bay, New York Jets, etc. Let's say these wide receivers land in good spots. London, Wilson, Olave, Burks, Jameson. Let's say they land in spots like Buffalo, Kansas City, Green Bay, Arizona. Do we really think that the hype of the draft season with that in full swing, that this 102 pick is going to be worth any less? No, I think it's the value is going to ev go up even further than what it is right now. The hype is going to be at an all-time high, and that 102 is going to be very desirable for a lot of teams, and they're going to be willing to give up a lot for it. Whereas Deontay Johnson, I mean, is his value really going to get better after the draft? No. I keep seeing mock drafts where the Steelers are going to draft a wide receiver. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it makes sense. But what if it does? I mean, Deontay's value doesn't get better with almost any scenario during the draft. So to choose Deontay right now, I feel like you're not really considering what the value of these two assets will be after the draft. And I, I do think the 102 is going to be more valuable um, with the hype of the NFL draft. You, we all fall in love with prospects and that just happens. People play with their hearts. Number two, the reason why I would prefer the 102 is because I have constantly been advocating to sell Deontay Johnson this off season. And I'll tell you a couple reasons why. Number one, how did Deontay Johnson have his best ever year in 2021? He finished as a wide receiver eight in fantasy football, but let's actually look at how he scored fantasy points. All right. Big Ben was the quarterback, as we know, and he could not throw a long ball to save his life. I mean, this guy couldn't throw the ball longer than 30 yards. The noodle arm was in full effect, which led to the Steelers who were a team who wanted to win to changing their game plan to shorter passes, the slants, the screens, and these wide receivers, specifically Deontay Johnson was a huge beneficiary of that change to this offense. Also keep in mind that they had one of their worst offensive lines in the NFL. So Deontay was just set up perfectly in my opinion. Big Ben last year, he ranked 31st in pass yards per throw. So he wasn't constantly airing it out, but it was high volume. It was high volume passes in this offense. And Deontay, he ranked 90th in yards per catch. So this is someone who finished as a top eight as a top eight scoring wide receiver, yet he was 90th in yards per catch. It it's not an effective offense. And Pittsburgh knows that. They knew that this was the absolute best they could do with Big Ben. But that offense is not going to say the same. They made the playoffs, but they were also bottom 12 in the league in, in scoring points per game. So this offense has to change. Big Ben is not there anymore. It is Mitchell Trubisky. Now, does Mitchell Trubisky help Deontay? I don't know. I, I, I really don't think that he does. I think we're going to find out who Mitchell Trubisky was and who he is pretty early into the season. And we're going to be like, oh, yeah. He's not a good starting quarterback. <laughs> um, so I, I think it's really hard to say, because I've seen on Twitter, I don't know if it's a meme or not, but people are saying, 
Deontay Johnson got a quarterback upgrade and no one's talking about it. Like, I hope that's a meme because it's just not true. He didn't get a quarterback upgrade. And the offense isn't going to be centered around the way that it was centered around Big Ben. It's just not going to happen. That offense was very limited and defenses knew how to defend it. So I just don't imagine the offense staying the same. And by the way, last year, only three teams threw the ball more than Pittsburgh. This is not a team that's going to want Mitch Trubisky throwing the ball 50 times per game. The offense is, ha- is going to have to change. Expect them to establish the run a lot more. So when I give out grades for this trade, you'll understand Team A, I gave a C plus, and Team B, I gave a B plus. So I do prefer the unknowns. I prefer the upside. And even if you don't want to draft a wide receiver to replace Deontay at the 102, I mean, you can easily tear up with this 102, whether you have to include a piece or not. You can easily tear up to one of these elite guys. Um, So for me, I really, really think that Deontay Johnson is a prime sell. And if I had Deontay Johnson and someone sent me the 102, for those reasons, I feel like I'm on Shark Tank. For those reasons, I'm out. Um, But no, for those reasons, I would smash accept the 102 for Deontay Johnson. So I know that this series is always controversial, but I hope that we always give good reasonings as to why we feel the way that we do. And yeah, you can disagree with me. That's okay. So comment down below what your thoughts are. Yo, what's good? What Thanks up? for watching. We got a lot more videos. A lot more. If you want more videos. Watch now, it. You can also subscribe. Right now. If you want to. You need to. And lastly, don't forget that you can sign up to support the show mm-hmm. and get exclusive content by going to patreon.com forward slash fantasyland fam.